easier to coach and motivate a team coming off two losses or a 30-point win? Well, you know, it, it's easy when uh, it, it's easier for it's human nature. When, when you're down, it's easy to get up unless you just don't have anything in you. I always say the, mo the hardest time to get a team ready is after things are gone well for you. You know, you, you, you got to be careful because young people have a tendency to forget why they came back and won. <laughs> and, you know, after you get knocked down a couple of times, anybody's going to get back up if you got anything about you. But when you have success, that's the hardest thing to handle for, for most people and particularly for young people. So we got a task ahead of us because we played very well at Temple, obviously, but we got to get motivated for the next game because it, you know, it, that, that game's over. It doesn't matter. You've got Houston's obviously struggling a long way from the pie slam and jamma days, I guess. How, what, what do they present to you? Well, you know, they've got some talented offensive guys, and they're a tremendous offensive rebounding team. Their biggest problem are they're not very deep in the bench, and that presents problems for them on the defensive end if they get any foul trouble, and, and then on the offensive end as well. You know, they have, they just are not very deep, but their first five are capable of putting points on the board. And uh, so, you know, again, we got to make sure this is a game that, that we get into their bench, that either we get them in foul trouble or it's a, it's a game where guys get worn down because of the press and because of our pace of the game uh, so that we can get into their bench because, again, their first five is pretty good. Coach, there's been a shift in their scoring load. <clears throat> At the beginning of the season, it was Devontae Pollard and uh, Jared Stiggers, but the last game, this kid named Chicken Knowles had a breakout game. Um, what are you doing to adjust the scheme based on his 30-point output last game? Well, I mean, the, you know, I've known that kid since he was probably a sophomore in high school. You know, watched him in AAU. He is a very, very talented guy. He's an NBA talent because of his size and ability to shoot the ball, and he can handle the ball a little bit for his size. So it doesn't surprise me that you know he he had that type of game. Now you know we'll see. Will he do that back to back? You know, will he continue to do that? Um, he's certainly capable, but. You know, when we go into a game, we, we watch a lot of film. You've got to base it on uh, the body of work by everybody, and you've got to be prepared for, you know, a guy like him obviously is, is talented enough that, that he can do that, uh, which he did against Tulane. But, um, you know, we got to prepare to beat their team, not just one guy. And, you know, sometimes uh, a part of beating their team is, is to be prepared for individuals, obviously. But, um, you know, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for him. Getting the production similar to what you got out of the two and three against um, Temple. Temple, yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> yeah. that you, you've talked about that being the goal, but uh, how do you get across to them that consistently they need to be at least close to what they were in that game? Well, I mean, again, offense is going to come and go with guys. Sometimes, you know, obviously in the guest temple, we, we made shots, made a lot of shots and from, you know, a lot of different positions. But that, that's been our goal all year is to get guys consistent. You know, I, I've always say this, coaches would much rather have a guy that can get you 15 night in and night out than a guy gets you 31 night and two the next night. I mean, because you just don't know what you're going to get. You know, on that guy that's going to get you seven rebounds, 15 points, Every night out, you know, you feel feel pretty good about that. And a guy that, you know, every once in a while gets 30, it's just like Chicken Knowles. Will he turn around and do that again, or will he go back and do kind of what he has been doing? We'll, we'll see. But, you know, you're right. We need to get consistency out of our twos and threes if we're going to be a better offensive team, certainly. When uh, Mick had his press conference to announce he was going to probably take the rest of the year off, he, he talked about the important that people know that so you can kind of settle in and the team can hear one voice. Have you felt like you've settled in more as this thing's kind of settled down and, and kind of gotten more routine as far as your duties as kind of the head coach? Yeah, I mean, it just becomes easier because you get into the routine of it. You, you get back in the saddle, so to speak, you know, on that. But, um, you know, uh, it, it, I just do my job. I mean, I, I'm, I'm out here and, and we got to prepare the team. Uh, that's the most important thing is getting the team prepared and, and I really don't think about it now. I just I'm in the role now, and I, I just got to go with it. And, and obviously, it's great that we got, you know, Mix around. Mix always there helping the the scheming of the game plan and that kind of stuff. And he's there to talk to the team at times, and um, you know, uh, in in pre-practice and that kind of stuff. So 
um, I've got the best of both worlds a little bit. I, I can do my own thing uh, in, in terms of my voice, but, but Mick's always there to support us. You said you had the Mick Cronin tie last game. <laughs> Anything planned for the, any, any article of clothing planned for the I don't know. I may have to tell him he has to buy me a tie for every game. I kind of like that. <laughs> He's got plenty of money. He can do that. <laughs> Coach, do you anticipate uh, Jermaine starting over Shaq again? Uh, you, you know, I mean, um, I would say that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, you know, but we'll see. It's always game to game and, and practice to practice. You know, you got you got to, you know, we, we try to, base it on strategy as much as anything and you know I just felt like it was time for a, a change in the lineup and, and obviously it worked so um, when, it's, when it's not broken you don't fix it. <laughs> and what, and what do you think caused Jermaine's explosive output? Well I mean again he made some shots but you know he he played basketball the way we wanted to him I mean he got two cuts to the basket for layups because you know we work on that feed the post and cut and he did that uh, two times and got himself two baskets. Uh, you know, he anticipated great in the press uh, the one time and, and you know, he's, he's just playing, he's a smart basketball player. And he, you know, he comes from a great background at Rice High School where um, they had great tradition before the school closed at winning and, and those guys were taught basketball. He's a smart basketball player and, and he used the smarts. And that's why I think he had, you know, he had such a good game. He, he played with intelligence. Use Shaq a little bit at the four. The other night, it looked like. Um, did you like what you saw there in terms of getting yeah, the I mean, mismatches you wanted? You know, for Shaq, that that's that creates the best mismatch. You know, for him because he, his quickness and his athleticism against four men who are not quite as quick usually, and that they they struggle struggle with him there. A three man, most three men in our league are going to be fairly as close as quick as Shaq. They may not be as tall, but they're you know quickness wise they're right there. So it allows Shaq to use some of his ball handling and his quickness to to beat him, and uh, so. Yeah, I mean, that, I liked what I saw there out of that. Making shots for a college basketball team sometimes is, <laughs> comes and goes, I would think. Um, can you put your finger on why the other night it, it kind of clicked for this team, why that was the night that you guys just made shots at such a high number in that game? Well, that's why we always preach defense and rebounding. That, that doesn't come and go, and shots are going to come and go, you know, depending on night to night. But I think because we established, we came out in the second half, established ourselves inside first got our confidence going a little bit, we got a little bit of a margin. It's always easy to jump up and make those threes when you're up eight or nine, as opposed to, you know, when it's a one or two point game, the, you know, the, the, it's a little tighter on you then. And, and I always believe this, when one or two guys make a shot, it's easier for the third and fourth guy to make a shot, because again, the pressure's off of them. We already got guys making shot, now I can take, you know, an open one and relax. And uh, I, I just think that, that just relaxing and, and shooting the ball, you know, in rhythm is big. But that all went back to early in the half. We started, we established ourselves inside, got a little bit of a, a, a margin to work with. And, you know, guys saw the ball going in. So then the jump starts started raining. And, you know, one of the best things that happened to us, and it happened twice, uh, one of them we missed and, and one of them we made, um, we came down the floor and Jermaine had just made a three. Kevin, we stole the ball and Kevin came on the break. And he was hunting for Jermaine to get it right back to him to shoot another one, which he did, and he missed it. And then Farad made one, and Troy came down on the break, and he was hunting for Farad, which he passed to Farad, and the guy closed hard on Farad, and he made one more pass to Jermaine and made a three. But that, that's a sign of we're beginning to think basketball like we should. When a guy makes one, you know, and, and particularly if you're in transition, you try to find him because he's probably going to be open. And when we did that twice, I, I was very pleased with, with our intelligence on both those plays by Kevin and Troy and, and Fried, obviously. Uh, you know, he made the one, what we call the one more pass, which he was semi-open, but Jermaine was wide open. And uh, that was all during that run.